Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Today's one will be short, sweet, and brief. Um, join me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 1. And I want to point out something very interesting there to you. I'll be reading from the King James. He says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. I stop there. Go back. What I want you to pay attention to is that in verse 1, where it says, any of you should seem to come short of it. Doesn't that sound strange to your ears that the Bible is talking about seeming to come short of it? If something seems to be something, it means that it doesn't necessarily have to be that thing, but it could be a semblance, it could resemble, it could, at the end of the day, not even be that thing which it seems to be. Like, okay, like I give an example. If somebody seems to be intelligent, at the end of the day, it might be that that person is a dollar. He just seems to be. Appearances are deceptive. Now, what is the Bible saying in that? The actual Greek word that is used there is translated in other parts of the Bible as think. So, if we substitute that word here, it says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should think that he should come short of it. You remember that the battle in this world actually is waged in the mind it's a it's a thought or a thought thing that the enemy wages war in your mind that is he gives you the impression or substance that you have fallen short and you can't get it so he says let us fear lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it in essence the promise is there. You're striving to get into rest. When I say striving, you're walking. Based, you're doing the necessary things, holding on to your confession. And then the enemy shoots thoughts into your head, letting, telling, giving you the impression that you missed it, that this would never happen. Because you do not go from the, the, the base of belief. If you believe, just like verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. So, it means the gospel was preached to a lot of folk, but the word preached did not profit them, because it was not mixed with faith. They didn't believe that which was preached. It's when you believe it, that those thoughts will come, that can come, and you stand against those thoughts. Because when it's a bedrock in your heart, when it's settled in the bedrock of your heart, the brain can sway you. You're seeing something, and you're saying, I can see it, but I don't believe it. You're saying something negative, something saying you've not got what God has promised you. And inside your heart, you say, but he cannot lie. I believe him. So I don't believe this trash I'm seeing. Praise God. Now, if we want, uh, just to throw in something else there. You remember what we, we talked about yesterday in terms of uh, how quickly the enemy wants to throw out uh, stuff uh, after you've received the word, like Jesus had told the disciples, let us, go, let us cross over to the other side. He had given a word. God had given a word to Jesus Christ. And he promptly fell asleep in the boat and they were going. And then out of nowhere, a storm arose to thwart and perish the purpose which they were going for. That's what the, the promise God had given them that they were going over to the other side. And um, I alluded to the fact that usually when the word goes forth, or you're standing on God's word with respect to something he has promised you, you made your declarations, that no sooner have you done that, especially when you've touched the enemy, when what you, you affected the kingdom of darkness, and uh, you have importance. No sooner has that, ha has that happened, than the enemy will come in to try and raise up a storm to get you distracted, to cause you to fear and panic. And let go of that promise that you think, just like the disciples thought, that they were that they, 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 they had come short of that promise, and instead we're now thinking that they were going to perish. Thinking 
it seemed as if they were going to perish. So they dwelt on that same stance, that seeming appearance as if they were going to drown. Well, after having preached that yesterday, this morning I encountered the same thing. Yesterday I had been standing, I had made some declarations, I had some commands concerning what I was doing. And no sooner had I done that than this morning, it seemed as if all hell broke loose with what I was standing for. Some, some pettiness uh, around the thing that it makes you, you, yes, you stay and wonder that could, could the devil be so petty? But yes, he could be so petty. Saying certain things that don't even make sense. But unfortunately for him, because he's a liar and he always comes with counterfeit, he comes with a lie, a lie all the time. It made one understand that, ah, this thing he's saying is a lie. And why is he bringing this lie now? It's because I touched him yesterday. That means I won. It, it reconfirms that I won yesterday. I did the right thing yesterday and I, I, I had an impact on him. So I rejoice. If you, if you happen to come across those kind of situations and circumstances in your life, rejoice. Rejoice. You are doing damage to his kingdom. You are giving your father pride in you. What you're doing, he says, hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. The fruit is coming. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. God bless you. Hallelujah.